on the Sportsman Zone. We continue, we continue, yes, we continue to provide you with updates on the Cricket West Indies four-day championship with action from St. Kitts and Nevis and Jamaica. Let's start at Chedwin Park where no play was possible on Wednesday due to a wet outfield in the encounter between Barbados Pride and the combined campuses and colleges. The match started today half an hour earlier with combined campuses and colleges winning the toss and electing to field Gerard Morisili is on location and joins us live. Gerard? Yeah, thank you so much, Ricardo. I'm here at Chedwin Park. Of course, you know, day two completed. Of course, the first day of play possible right here. Uh, combined campuses and colleges in their first first class game in over five years, seven years, closer to nine years, uh, they won the toss against Barbados Pride and surprisingly chose to field first on well, we didn't know it was an impossible for play, but that was because of a waterlogged field, but the pitch was pretty decent for batting and Barbados Pride definitely made notice of that with scoring 344 for 8 declared in the first innings total, of course. That was spearheaded by Kevin Wickham, who scored 139. Also, Jonathan Drake's 84. Uh, there was a pretty good start for the CCC team. They got two early wickets, Craig Brathwaite and Shane, and Shane Mosley. But then uh, Wickham and McCaskey, well, McCaskey and Drake's rather, were at the crease and they had a really decent partnership up until the, the first session, until lunchtime. And then from there, it was all Wickham and uh, Drake's, who both got past the half century mark after the post session, with Kevin Wickham pushing on for a century and Drake's falling short for 84. I actually have Kevin Wickham here with me. It was a really good day for him. Uh, he batted tremendously, constructed his innings perfectly. Kevin, let me talk to you now and, and just oh. get the, an idea from you of how the overall day's play was for you. Um, the day was pretty okay. Um, obviously, when I went into bat, there were three wickets down for about a hundred and little. And I knew that my job was just to bat as long as possible. And I knew that if I bat as long as possible that I could take it very deep and get my team to a good total. Yeah, well, when you came out to bat, you were, when you first started your innings, you were with McCaskey. He seemed to be, you were with Drakes, who seemed to be the aggressor in the, the partnership. But then when he got up, you, you took it from there and just changed gears. Yeah, obviously, we play as a team, and cricket is partnerships and knowing your role. Obviously, that might not be my my game plan, is to just probably not to support. But, I mean, Drake's was going well, so I had no choice but to take the back seat and just watch him go. And it was a bit difficult when I first started, but as I got, I, as I got in, it became easier. They capitalized. Well, of course, it, it helped that you were dropped a couple of times too in your innings. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, you know, the, the conditions here, despite having a waterlogged field, the pitch seemed pretty comfortable to bat on. Do you agree with that? Well, the pitch is a bit up and down, but it's still very good to bat on. Once you watch the ball as long as possible, you could get a decent score. All right, Kevin, well, 9 for 1, Barbados Pride pretty much leading this one. Um, do you think you're going to be, be able to push on and make combat campuses and colleges back a second time tomorrow? Yeah, it, it will not be easy. Obviously, as I said, the pitch could only get better and it's staying a bit lower already. So, I mean, once we put the ball in the right areas, we give them a challenge and, and put them on the back foot early tomorrow morning and we keep pushing for a victory. Thank you, Kevin. And well played today. Good knock. Yeah, so 139 there from Kevin Wickham, the centurion on today's uh, today's play. So the scores here quickly. Barbados Pride, 344 for 8, declared in their first innings. And at the close of play, combined campuses and colleges, they're 9 for 1. So Barbados Pride, they have a lot to work on tomorrow if they want to make combined colleges and co campuses and colleges back. A second time tomorrow, of course, they will be pushing for a win, as you heard Kevin Wickham say. And uh, yeah, that's it from Chedwin Park on day 2 of the West Indies Championship. Yeah, thanks very much. Gerard there from Chedwin Park. Kevin Wickham lands 139 from 135 deliveries 
eight fours and nine sixes mm. and he didn't want to speak too much about the fact that he was put down a couple of times but I told you about the one that Jonathan Carter put down when he was on four but when you play this game of cricket there are going to be days when you get opportunities you have to make use of them and Kevin Wickham definitely made use of them today yeah um, quality player, um, we saw him at the Under-19 World Cup and um, he definitely showed his quality there. He's only 20 years old and he's also coming off 100 in the West Indies A series against the Ireland Emerging Team, which was just a couple of months ago in, in December. He had made 100 in that last match along with um, Kevlin Anderson, who is now captaining the Ghana Harper, Harper Eagles team. Both of Harper Eagles, both of them had scored hundreds against the Ireland emerging team. So back-to-back -back hundreds in matches here for Kevin Wickham. And uh, great to see the 20-year-old uh, putting his head down in that discussion there with uh, Gerard Morrissey. He did suggest that there were parts of the innings that he wasn't playing his natural game because Drakes was the man, Jonathan Drakes, who was um, pressing the gas. And he was just supportive but, you know, good that he was able to apply himself and get 100. This is what we need to see from these 20-year-olds playing first-class cricket, having this big appetite for runs. Yeah, very much the case. Next time, I want him to get to that century without giving any chances, <laughs> but you have to give him credit for his performance today. Um, Barbados pride with Craig Brathwaite, the West Indies captain in their setup, also with Zachary McCaskey at the top of the order, just returning from Australia, although he did not play in any of the test matches, McCaskey. Um, neither of them getting off, though. Brathwaite going for seven, McCaskey making 30. And one of the things I always want to see, Lance, it's great when the up-and-coming players do well in your regional competitions, but you want the players who are at the West Indies level that when they step down to the regional level, that they dominate. And I've not really seen any of the West Indies lead batsmen on the first two days of this tournament really dominate yet. And I'll be looking um, forward to that for the remainder of this tournament. A solid point that you're making there, Ricardo, because I've had that discussion many times, um, even from my school days, when there were times where there were players who were representing Jamaica and even the West Indies. Yes. And, you know, uh, there were a couple of my teammates at Woolmers who were playing senior cup cricket, and uh, they would come to school on a Monday morning boasting that they got the wicket of so-and-so. Uh, and I'm suggesting that, you know, if I were a West Indies player and I'm coming back to play domestic cricket, um, the last thing I want is for a schoolboy to get me out. And I think that international players playing domestic cricket in their regions should be bullying the bowling. Yes. They should make it very, very evident that when they come back to play, that this is not their level, yes. that their level is a lot higher. So I agree with you 100%, Ricardo, that I think our West Indies players in regional cricket should be scoring a lot of runs. They, we want to see them scoring a lot of runs and having the appetite for beginnings. Yeah, and I think it's even more important these days because the, 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 uh, the West Indies team is not as strong as it used to be. Um, so as part of continuing to build that, you want the players that you are investing in, that you are saying, this is my frontline setup to dominate at this level and show that they really belong there and show that they are learning at that level and making the improvements at the lower level to go back to the higher level and do even better. All right, let's move away from Chedwin Park then and head to Sabina Park where the Windward Islands Volcanoes responding to the Jamaica Scorpions first innings 159 all out were dismissed for 341. In reply, they had resumed, of course, on 157 for two. Johan Jeremiah was the top scorer with 81 of three batsmen for the Windward Islands Volcanoes to get half centuries because there was 71 for Shamar Springer and there was 57 for Ryan John. Remember, John had taken 5 for 43 on the opening day of that contest. Gordon Bryan was the pick of the Scorpions bowlers with 4 for 64. Pete Salmon, the spinner, got three wickets as well. Meanwhile, over in St. Kitts and Nevis, a weather system passing over the Lesser Antilles forced the display to be called off at both venues without a ball being bowled. 
Here's a reminder of the day one scores. At Connery Cricket Ground in St. Kitts, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force selecting to bat reached 215 before Bad Light stopped play. Jason Mohammed, he is on 100 not out. Tion Webster contributed 50 against Ronsford Beaton's 2 for 39 and at one apart, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes bowled out for 137 after being sent to bat and the West Indies Academy in reply 60 for 2 at the close of the opening day. No play on day 2 in St. Kitts and Nevis and hopefully we'll be able to get play on day number three because we want to see as much cricket as possible, Lance. Yeah, and um, good to see in that Windward's Volcanoes match where some of the leading bowlers are, are getting runs as well. Yeah. Shamar, Shamar Springer and, and Ryan John having done well with the ball yes. to get the Jamaicans out for their low total, coming back and batting and getting some runs as well. Yeah, well, of course, Grenada celebrated 50 um, yesterday, 50 years of independence, independence and yeah. Ryan John ensuring that he gives his special gift to <laughs> his country with five wickets yesterday and a half century today. Very well done. That's it for our Cricket West Indies four-day roundup. Second day of the competition. First round will be back tomorrow. It looks as if that match at Sabina Park will be completed tomorrow, so I'm very <laughs> sure that Gerard will be there. And yeah, we'll keep you very much updated here on the Sports Mag Zone. Let's take a break and come back and hear your thoughts in interactive.